said this morning. I said, please don't allow anybody. I don't want to care who the person is. When you hear that maybe somebody in the body of Christ did something, or that, that shouldn't be distracting you. The Bible said, looking unto Jesus. That is what he said. Looking unto who? Unto Jesus. And the believers who are distracted are the believers who are not looking unto Jesus. You start looking at things you're not supposed to be looking at. And you forget they are humans. They have the tendency to miss it. Pastors are human beings. Apostles are human beings. They have the tendency to miss it. A church is a family. How many of you in your family has there was a quarry and you changed your name? So you're not going to bear that name again. Okay, let me ask you this question. How many of you have had a fallout in your family? Refight. Well, there was a changing of words. Let me see your hand. Okay, only two people are real in this church. Other people, don't bother yourself. Your family is perfect. <laughs> Hallelujah. In, in real family setting, <laughs> everyone don't reason together. <laughs> Even husband and wife, things may happen and people say things. You get what I'm saying right now? But we'll come back again and reconcile. But why is it in church we don't do that? Church is the family of God. When you hear that something is going wrong in church, yeah, you're not supposed to say, oh, man, I'm leaving this church, you know. How can that happen? No, if you leave your family. You don't treat your family that way. You have stuck with those, your siblings <laughs> for more than five years. For more than 20 years, <laughs> for more than 25 years, you have stuck with them. Your brother used to be crazy. Your sister used to be crazy. You are still with them. You are still bearing the same name. Why? Why haven't you said, I'm changing my name. I'm leaving this family. I'm tired. No, wherever you are, if your name is Wabara, you're still answering Wabara. Hallelujah. Somebody's not looking at me. Somebody said, Pastor, why do you use that name? No, that's, uh, people used to answer that name. Amen. Praise the Lord. So you, you didn't change the name. Your son offended you. He's still your son. But why is it that in church, we don't have the family culture? We should have the family. Whatever that happens in family happens in church. Whatever that happens in family happens in church. Because church is the family of God. And wherever there, are fam there is a family, there will be disagreement. Someone will disagree with people. We'll disagree to agree. <laughs> So, why is it that a lot of people easily get offended and abandon the family because of what happens to the family? Why? Because they are not growing. When you're growing spiritually, you understand that the church is a family. And because the church is a family, somebody may be hurt, somebody may be offended, but it's our responsibility to enjoy forgiveness and healing and restoration. Uncommon partners think the body of Christ. Uncommon partners, they don't, how many of you something happened in your family and you take the matter everywhere? Is it what you do? Sometimes you say, shh, don't let anybody hear it. Is it not what you do? But when something happened in church, church people are the, some church people are the first set to tweet it, to shout it, to talk about it. But they're in their own private family. Things are going worse. They're not tweeting it. Why? They're enemies of God. <laughs> They, they, they take joy in fighting the kingdom. There are believers unknowing to them that their action is fighting God. Their action is fighting the kingdom. So what am I trying to say? Uncommon partners think about the well-being of the kingdom. They think about the well-being. They think about the protection, the preservation of the kingdom. Uncommon partners are thinking the preservation of the kingdom. We should not be losing people. We should be restoring and recovering people. That is a kingdom attitude. That's what uncommon partners do. They think recovering and restoring. They think what? Recovering and what? And restoring. They are not thinking division, strive, and throwing away. We can't keep throwing people away. Hallelujah. We can't keep throwing. The reason why Jesus died. Who did Jesus die for? Huh? Yes, he died. he died for every one of us. He died for every one of us. See, if, if we are perfect, if we are okay, there was no need for salvation. Uncommon partners look at things from redemption perspective. They look at things from redemption perspective. What will Jesus do in this situation? That's how they think. What will Jesus do? How will Jesus respond to this? You know, the woman was caught in adultery and they came to Jesus 
You know, they were so excited because they felt they could maybe have favor. They could look at them and say, ah, man, you guys are very spiritual. You guys are very powerful. And they said this woman was caught in the very act. And I notice sometimes always women, the men are not caught. Hallelujah. And where is the man? Maybe the man who empowered them and took off. Hallelujah. They couldn't handle the man. The man punched somebody. You come out here. <laughs> you, come, you know, something like that. You know, so don't worry about that. So the man, uh, uh, maybe took off and the woman, the women are always the victims. And I don't like that. Praise the Lord. Women can I hear Jesus is here with me. <laughs> okay. Glory be to God. So they, 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 they said she was caught in the very act. So they were expecting Jesus to start condemning her one and start maybe rebuking her and saying something about her. You know what she did. What she did was wrong. Jesus did not support what she did. But Jesus was addressing the issue the way it should be addressed. They, they came after her. They want to kill her. And Jesus said, whom among you here that have not seen? She do what? She cast the stone, you know? And everybody was guilty there. That simply means that they have, everybody was having the same issue. Just that her own was different. You know, some people, when other people's issue is out, it's like they don't have issue. Uncommon partners project the, the love of God in situations. Uncommon partners, they do what? They project the love of God in what? In situations. When they hear that something is going wrong, it, they, you can't be an intercessor without being a love warrior. Have you heard about love warrior? I know you have heard about prayer warriors. Hear this one. This one is called love warriors. Love warriors. Amen. Love warriors are great intercessors. Love warriors are those individuals that does not know how to give up on God, on God's people, and on his kingdom. Love warriors. They, they, they know that this is the will of God for us. This is the plan of God for us. We're, we're going to see what we can do to make this go right. Love warriors are not people who continue to condemn people. We have not received the ministry of condemning people. We have received the ministry of reconciliation. Hallelujah. We have not received the ministry of condemning people. It's easy to condemn what others are doing without looking at what you are doing as a person. So, we saw in the Second Kings chapter 6, you know, uh, can you just drop that NLT? Second Kings 6, let's do verse 1 and 2. Hallelujah. Second Kings chapter 6 from verse 1 and 2. Second Kings 6. Okay. He said, and one day the group of prophets came to Elisha and told him, as you can see, this place where we meet with you is too small. Verse 2. Let's see that. He said, Let's go down to Jordan River where there are plenty of logs where we can build a new place for us to meet. All right, he told them, go ahead. Now, an uncommon partner will forecast his vision before his leader. That's very important. You need to write that down. Uncommon partners will forecast their vision before their leader for the purpose of getting instruction from the leader for the purpose of submission and accountability for the purpose of receiving direction and uncommon partners submit their vision to their leader because they understand the value of authority they understand the value of authority they understand the value of leadership they didn't just go and start building, scattering things and start bringing the logs. Who told you to do that? They have not gotten an approval. No, the uncommon partners understand the principle of order. They understand the principle of order to do things. The scripture said, let all things be done decently and in order. So, uncommon partners are people who take permission for their mission. They take permission for their mission. They don't just do whatever they want to do. They consult with leadership for direction. They consult with leadership for inspiration. They consult with leadership for insight. They consult with leadership for 
the purpose of building synergy as we can accelerate this vision. They consult with leadership for the purpose of spiritual covering. So they, they, they didn't say, oh, I have a vision to expand this place. Let me just start expanding it. No, Elisha could have been surprised. What happened? But because these guys, these fellow, these people, they have an understanding that we need to consult our man of God, our leader, before we move forward. We need this approval. What, why do we need approval? Well, approval is a sign that a, a, a high authority is in partnership with you. I said what? Approval is a what? It's a sign of a higher authority is in partnership with you. That simply means he's, he, he, there is a tendency for him to share the liability, the waste, the stress, the pressure, the responsibility, the challenges that may emanate as a result of the pursuit of that vision. So that is why you need approval for the things God may ask you to do. God has spoken to you to do it, but you have a spiritual authority. You have a spiritual leader. You have somebody that God has put you under he or her leadership to watch over you. So there is a need for you to communicate to them and talk with them and say, I want to do this. You know, sometimes people decide to do something without listening to cancel, but it's only when things have gone bad, they start crying, oh my God, I've messed up my life, I've ruined my life. No, the reason for cancel is not because you lack knowledge. The reason for cancel is not because you are not good. The reason for cancel is to give you an insight that you may have not considered. I said the reason for cancel is to give you an insight that you may have not considered. Is to give you a thought, a thinking that has this possibility of making you look at things from a different perspective. Okay, I never considered this. I never looked at this. That's the reason for cancel. So the scripture said a multitude of what? Of cancel. There is what there is safety. So protection is connected to cancel protection sometimes we are protected from having doctrinal problem there are a lot of young preachers that are having doctrinal problem why did i say that because the fact oh i've received this revelation from god i can teach it you know there are people you need to submit your teaching to they need to look at that thing with you they need to judge that thing you're sharing there there are there are things that are very important. You know, things we do. Jesus have died is important. Jesus is coming soon is important. Hallelujah. Baptism in the spirit is important. Walking in love is important. Living by faith is important. There are key subjects in our work with God that is very, that we cannot compromise. The integrity of the word of God. You got what I'm saying right now? The integrity of God's word. So when you an uncommon partner you're thinking about you're thinking from the word of god you're not just thinking from your emotion my emotion may be up today and tomorrow may be done but god's word is stable god's word is permanent so i, I need to stay with the word of god that is permanent my emotion may i may have challenge emotionally i may have challenge spiritually but the word of god is true so i use the word of god to correct myself i use the word of god to bring direction and leadership to myself. So what am I trying to say is that uncommon partners does not abuse authority. They utilize authority for the purpose of advancing their mission. They, they don't abuse authority. They don't despise authority. You know, there are a lot of people that said, I'm very gifted. I don't need to listen to anybody. I'm very gifted. I'm anointed. No, listening preserve your life. One of the ways you can preserve your life is by listening. There are certain things you want to do and there are people that have done it. Wisdom suggests that you listen to them. Wisdom suggests that you do what? You listen to them. In the course of listening to them, there are things they will say to you that can change you. You know, you're struggling to do this thing. You're struggling to do that. And one instruction from someone who has been there can just change the whole thing. He's looking at it, but you're not seeing it. It's okay. Take that chair out of that place. I sit here. Why would you tell me that? 
Sitting here is good for me. Why are you telling me to sit there? Like, can I say this to you? Wisdom is a great resource in advancing your vision. I said, what? Wisdom is a what? Is a great resource in what? In advancing your vision. Wisdom is a great resource. I, I cannot truly really do much with my assignments, with my calling, but what God has called me to do if I lack wisdom. So wisdom comes to us sometimes from people we never expected. They just say something. Else. You have to be wise to respond to wisdom. I said what? You have to be wise to respond to wisdom. A fool doesn't respond to wisdom. You know, the scripture even said that the wisdom is too high for a fool. It's so high that he's foolish. The guy is not seeing it. She's not seeing it. Wisdom is an, is an, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Wisdom is a supernatural insight from God that empowers you to function in his will. That's where I want to put it. Wisdom is a supernatural insight from God that empowers you to do his will. That's where I want to define my wisdom today. I said wisdom is a supernatural insight from God. A supernatural insight from God that empowers you to do his will. It's a supernatural insight from God that empowers you to do his will. You know, in some situations, something could happen. Say, Lord, I trust you for your wisdom. Lord, I just need your wisdom in this situation. If your wisdom of God minded, you will always be ahead of every situation. I want to say this again. I said, if your wisdom of God minded, you will always be ahead in every situation. Becoming wisdom of God minded. Lord, I, I receive wisdom to know what to say about this. You know, sometimes we think we know what to say, only to say what we think we know, only to create more problems. And we have more challenges to contend with or we have, we have created strife as a result of uh, what we said. So what am I trying to say is that it takes the wisdom of God for you to be an uncommon partner. That you see the things that others don't see. You hear the things that others don't hear. They came to Elisha with an intention to respond to his leadership. Now, Second Kings chapter uh, 6 verse 3. No, verse, verse 4. 2 Kings 6, verse 4. 2 Kings 6, verse 4. From the NLT translation. 2 Kings 6, verse 4. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Okay, said, so he went with them. When they arrived at the Jordan, they began cutting down trees. The next verse, verse 5. They start cutting down trees, verse 5. Verse 5, the next one. The next verse, are you there? Okay, he said, but as one of them was cutting a tree, the axe head fell into the river. Oh, sir, he cried. It was a borrowed axe. You know, this fellow went to, it wasn't even his axe head. It was not his, it was not his own. He went to borrow to work for the kingdom. Now, can I say this to you? Uncommon partners go extra mile to enforce the will of God. Uncommon partners, they go extra mile to do what? To enforce the will of God. Now, watch what happened here. They went to bore, he went to borrow. He cried out, oh, I borrowed this thing. I borrowed this axe head. It has fallen into the river. He cried out. He came with all his heart to save. He came with all his hands. He didn't have the resources. He borrowed the resources. An uncommon partner is willing to accept responsibility that will advance the kingdom for the purpose of Christ being glorified. Uncommon partner is willing to accept the responsibility. He's willing to accept the responsibility. This fellow here we read accepted responsibility. Uncommon partners don't run from responsibility they walk towards responsibility. They see responsibility as an opportunity to provide leadership. Responsibility should be an opportunity to provide leadership. Responsibility should be an opportunity to provide leadership. 
An uncommon partner will always look for an opportunity for responsibility. But you know when someone doesn't think the kingdom, they run from responsibility. I don't want anybody to tell me to do this. I don't want to do that. They are always hiding from responsibility. If you are hiding from responsibility, you are hiding from progress. If you are hiding from responsibility, you are disconnecting yourself from progress. How do you make progress? You make progress by accepting responsibility. You come to church, you don't just say, I don't want to be hurted. I don't want to be offended. I don't want anybody to talk about me. Oh, they will talk about you. Sure. They will offend you. Sure. If, if you come to this church, like a friend one time said, he said, if you have come to his church, he was talking, he said, and you have not been offended in this church, he said, you have not joined. Something that will make you leave church to come, and you said, I'm sitting back. So if you're looking for a place where you will not be offended, you know what the person need to do? What will the person do? Eh? Die. Who said that? Who said die? Thank you. Your answer is very correct. That is the only way. It's to die. Who come for the person's funeral. It will no, nobody will offend him again. But as long as you are a human being, <laughs> as long as you're in the midst of people, <laughs> there is a tendency that situation that will lead to offense will come. And for some people, they say, Oh, I can't take that. Oh, I can't take that. I don't like the way they did to me. Let me say this to you the next place have more offenders. You always, people are people. People are people. Whether they are white or they are black. All they are colorless. They are people. <laughs> Trust me. I've worked with all kinds of people. I've seen people get offended. If I tell you why they got offended, you'll be laughing. <laughs> it's a person. Can this kind of thing offend someone? Yes, so you offended the person. The person got angry. The person got. <laughs> Let's take, for instance, I sent to you a word. I send you a word. Esther, God is going to bless you and God will multiply you in Jesus' name. Amen. Then, I went to Dembo and sent Dembo the same word. Dembo, God is going to bless you and prosper you in Jesus' name. So, you and Dembo started talking. He said, Pastor sent me a word that God is going to bless me and prosper me in Jesus' name. And he said, oh, he sent you that same word. Pastor, why will you send that to Dembo? I thought that word was only for me. I'm telling you, I've been in those situations. You're laughing, sister. She? It makes you to laugh. It, 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 you're wondering, ah, Pastor, can people think like, yes. Real fight. Serious fight. Why are you listening? It's supposed to be for me, especially. Then what should be part of this? But you see, sometimes people get offended at things that you know, someone said, God, please help your people. <laughs> That's what I used to say. Help them, please. Because there are certain things that offense that shouldn't be. It should not be that. We we're reading the same Bible. Is it not true? But you see, I've seen situations where people get mad. Seriously mad. And they were not happy. Because that same word I gave to Esther, I gave to them more. And they felt that it was not a rema word from God. But you see, your level of offense comes from where you are spiritually. If you are not matured spiritually, every situation will be an offense. I want to say that again. If you are not matured spiritually, every, word, every situation will be what? Will be an offense. Everything gets you offended. Why are you talking to me like that? Why did you keep that pot there? Why did you keep this there? Why did you keep that? Up? Every little thing. Can I say this? Leave to be honest. Say, Jesus, I am far from offense. I will walk in love. I have a love of God minded. And not offense minded. I refuse to walk in offense. The love of God will overtake me. That should be my thinking that I'm going to be love of God minded. 
Hallelujah. So this young man that his axe head fell, there was a tendency for him to get angry. Look at now, I've come to bid for church. Now I've lost my watch. And they go to their office, they lose something, they will not complain. They will bear it and come back to the work the next day. Is it not true? I've come to bid for church. I've lost my phone. How many people have gone to the office and they lost their phone? Did they resign from work? Eh? They are going to office. Every month they are giving you 200,000, 300,000. You lost your phone on the road. Sir, my boss, I'm not going to work in this company. It was when I was coming from work that my phone got lost. In short, the way you report it to your boss, you report it on the expectation for him to buy your phone. Sir, today I just had a problem. Oh, he said, "What's the problem? My phone just got lost." Hey, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sir, you would not do it. Huh? I was coming to this place. I lost my phone. I'm packing my things. That's not what you do. That's not what you do. But people do it in church. It was when I was coming to church that they stole my bag. It was when I come to church they stole my cord. I didn't see my cord. They changed my, what do you call that thing again? Battery. They removed my battery, Pastor. See, this church is not a company where they charge for. <laughs> so, you're charging your phone at your risk. <laughs> Even the banks, I do business with people I work for corporation. When I go there, they say, at owner's risk, you're parking the car. Major e firms, they were right at, they are telling you, if they steal your car, that is your business. You see it on the wall already. So you're parking your car with yourself. So when you come to church, keep your things well. Amen. Did you hear what I said? Yes. No, pastor, all of us are holy. Amen. I agree, but keep your things well. <laughs> keep your things well. I would say, hey, you know, well, no, 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 no. I used to have one member many years ago. He will always be dropping his phone. And he I said, be watching your phone. He said, pastor, nothing will happen. I've pastored for many years. I can tell you what can happen in church. Unsaved people come to church. There are people who are saved that are not yet delivered from stealing. They still pick. Yes, they need to go. They are God's people, though. God is still working on them, but not my phone. I want to keep my well. So, you know what happened to this fellow? One day he came, he couldn't find the phone. Oh, Pastor Mashak, I said, My brother, I told you. I told you. I've told you. You come to church. Anytime you go to Christian gathering, don't just leave your bag. That's why when they are making altar call in major meeting, they say, come with your bag. Carry your bag. Because you can go to receive Christ before you come back. Somebody have collected your phone and your money. I'm just telling you. As you not get offended, ah, what is church people? I'm tired of church. Pastor, go, go, go. See, I'm just telling you how things are. As you, you, you carry, you do. How many of you sleep at night and leave your door open? So why will you come to church and leave your things anyhow? So there has to be some order. This you keep with your things, you keep your things proper, you watch over your things, you don't become careless and say nothing will happen. All the people that say nothing will happen, they have I've seen them something has happened to them. Because it says nothing will happen. Why am I saying this? I'm saying this because this young man went to fell the tree, and the axe said fell into the river. He wasn't offended, he was not mad. For so many people they were angry. Now I've come to do this. Have you seen some He said, Why are you not coming to church? And the last time we were walking, as we were doing that walk, they didn't give me rice. When they were sharing the food, I was not really happy. The way they shared that food, mama they didn't give me rice. They didn't give me, Zesta was sharing. Okay, it was Esther that shared in the last one. I need to call your name. Let's, let's call the name properly. So, <laughs> so <laughs> the way Zesta shared that rice, I was not happy. But wh why haven't you gone to church? Not a pastor. Not a pastor. I said, uh, bro, what's happening? Nothing, Pastor. So when that's the pastor, look at him. That's the woman. <laughs> so you, you can have these things in church. You know, when Paul was writing, he said, why is there division and strife among you? You know, look at Acts chapter 6. What is causing the problem? Why did they introduce the ministry of Dickens in the Bible? Now, food, though. <laughs> that, that you have Dickens today. It's food matter. There was contention. These are people that don't receive Holy Ghost, praying in tongues, healing miracles, concerning food. Some people don't have Holy Ghost in that area. Anytime it comes to food, their Holy Ghost shut down. They will fight with everything. You know, so sometimes 
people, that's why this is a family. God has a family. And that is why we need to be in love. Sometimes they are, they are sharing something and you notice somebody have nothing. You say, come and take my own. An uncommon partner let go for others for them to stay. That's, that's, that's a leader. That's a leader. We have something to do over the weekend for some of my friends and uh, some people were struggling to contribute the money. Some people were contributing. So I told my friend, if, if it comes to the worst, what will happen is that me, I will not eat. Me, I don't even eat much. I will just take water and leave my food for somebody to eat. But the meeting must hold. So one of our friends now called and said, ah, you don't need to worry about that. I'll pay for everybody to eat. Everybody. Don't just let everybody show up. Now, there are people that if they attend such function and they didn't eat, that will be the last time they will respond to your text or mail. They, in short, they will carry in their heart to the grave. There are people who died remembering how they did not eat in one wedding. They are telling. Now, I'm sharing things with you. Sometimes, ah, Pastor, does this is happen? Yes, I, I'm the pastor, so I could tell you the experience I have with people. So, uncommon partners don't get offended if their portion didn't come to them, especially for portion. They don't get offended. I'm not from it's okay. I can always make you with this. I can. Uncommon partners are always in a leadership position where they give opportunities to others to have the experience than them as leaders. This, they let go. They let go. But you see some people they are sharing. They have brought out for their son, for their friend, for everybody. Overseas basket. They have kept it somewhere. Nobody should cross here. Nobody. And other people haven't eaten. So the other of my sister that have been coming to church three months ago that have not showed up. These are all. The other of my cousin that came two years ago. These are all. This other person. These are all. This is of my mother. This one is my father. Everybody. They have. Now, the person is in the sharing committee, but has forgotten the vision. The vision is not for people who are not here. The vision is for people that are where? Here. Uncommon partners are sensitive to the present issue. That's one. All those things I said is to come to this point. Uncommon partners are sensitive to the present issue. They are sensitive to what is going on now. What is really happening right now? They are sensitive to the issues, to the matters on ground. You're thinking a function is going on in your department, in where you serve, and you're looking for opportunity to satisfy everybody, which I know that satisfying everybody, you know, it's not many times in the Bible they said that everybody was pleased with the same. It was, if it's, maybe like, <laughs> it's not much. Sometimes they are not pleased with it. Some people are together, some people are not together. Scripturally, you look at that. He said, and, and Jesus said to those Jews who believe, he didn't say to all the Jews, to those Jews. That's some ways, even when you're sharing revelation, the word of God. You know, people used to say, when you're teaching the word of God very well, people will not be sleeping in church. It's not true. People sleep when the revelation is hot. Paul had an experience. He was teaching powerful words. Somebody fell. Paul, the man, who, you know, so, uh, you know, ah, if people are sleeping in church, it means the preacher is not on fire. Who can be on fire than Paul? That people fell from his meeting. Somebody fell. They went to raise him back to life. See, that guy didn't sleep again. When he came back from life, we didn't hear about him sleeping. He knows what has happened to him. He has crossed and came back. So some of our brethren have not been there. And Jesus will not let them to be there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So what am I trying to say? Uncommon partners are sensitive to issues. They are sensitive. How do we do this? Okay, let's manage it this way. Let's do this. They consult. They relate. They rapport. They try to see how the possibility of resolving the issue. That's a leader. A leader is not someone who knows everything. A leader is someone who opened the door for subjection. Wise leaders allow subjection to come. Wise leaders allow subjections to come. They open door for subjections. They open door for cancel. They open door for, for contribution. Can you contribute? What do you think about this? How can we do this? How can we? Now, even if you run an organization, 
always give people an opportunity to say something. They may say something that can change the whole organization. You don't stand and say, well, ah, uh, I don't think I can handle this, so let me do this alone. A wise leader is not a person, or an uncommon partner is not a person who wants to take the glory for every victory, but is someone who wants to celebrate every victory with others. This is the difference. An uncommon leader, an uncommon partner, is not someone who wants to take the glory for every victory, but is someone who wants to celebrate every victory with his team members. Whether I'm the one that brought the idea, or our sister brought it, or our brother brought it, we are all celebrating the victory. That is how uncommon leaders think. They think from that perspective. That is how they think. They, they, are, they are not trying to say, oh, I was the one that brought the ideas. You know, it was when I brought this idea that this happened. No, they, they want to celebrate with everyone. That level of wisdom opens up for uh, relationship, opens up for people being comfortable. Uh, that there, there are some environments you cannot be comfortable with. There are people you cannot be comfortable with. There are relationships you cannot be comfortable with. So, but for, for people to be comfortable and to be relaxed, it means they are being carried along. And if you're not being carried along, there is a tendency for you to, be, to feel that you're being neglected. You got what I'm saying? Uh, you're, you're being neglected. You know, somebody was sharing something. One well, this group chat, and someone said, uh, a friend said, she can't stay on the group chat. And somebody said, why? He said, these people are talking to their friends. That when she says something, nobody is responding to her. That that's why she's leaving. Why? Because this fellow, they are, they are, have her, her sis, have her. They are talking to themselves. But she, nobody was talking to her. So she got offended. So when people are not carried along, the offense may increase. And that is why every wise leader needs to have a fair playground. You know, you need to have a fair playground for vision to drive, for, for visions to flourish, for visions to succeed. You need to have a fair ground where people could easily connect but one another, an uncommon leader is always looking for opportunity to serve others. That's what happened. An uncommon leader is always looking for opportunity to serve others. See, be the person who wants to serve, not the person to be saved. Always, can I serve in this area? Can I serve in that area? Can I do this? Can I do that? Hallelujah. Can I do this? Pastor, let me do this. Pastor, let me do that. I'll fix it. Uh, that, that's, that's an uncommon partner. He's always thinking solution. How to make the place comfortable for others to serve effectively. Can I say this to you? Success in any area of life begins with a thinking that is consistent with the knowledge of the will of God. I want to say that again. Success in any area of life begins with a thinking that is consistent with the knowledge of the will of God. If it is not consistent with the knowledge of the will of God, it will not produce the kind of success being required. So, what am I trying to say? Uncommon partners will give uncommon attention to God's kingdom. 